People who knew someone who died in a freak accident, what happened? A cousin of mine was electrocuted by a Dr. Pepper machine. His two children received $60,000 that Thier mom lost on bingo. This is the saddest, most American sentence I've ever heard. A mom went ice skating. Little slip, fell, all everyone saw was her bump her head lightly. Family finished skating. On the ride home, she started speaking gibberish. Dad dropped kids at the grandparents, took mom to the ER. Brain swelling, coma, dead a week later. My insurance guy was pulling a limb out of a large tree with a chain and a rope. He was behind the pickup, his wife was driving the truck. Rope snapped from the strain and chain snapped back and hit him in the head, killing him instantly. He was in his 50s. Nice guy, too, ironic thing, is this is exactly the sort of scenario he would describe as to why you need life insurance. That's called, snap back. It's no joke. When I was in the Navy they make you watch training videos of footage of snapback happening on those big mooring lines, and big ropes will fucking move at the speed of bullets and literally explode your ass into mist. I was trapped on a small raft that went adrift in a storm during military exercises with the merchant marines. We went adrift because one of our lines fell off as the storm increased in intensity, and the other wet line was getting more and more taut as the waves got bigger in the storm. The raft was about 20 feet by 20 feet, which means there's not really anywhere to run if that line snaps, because the line doesn't snap back in a straight line. It flaps back and forth if you watch it in slow motion, covering a large area as it flies past you. We decided it was safe to throw off the last mooring line and just float adrift and hope they found us in the morning then risk keeping the line on and get hit with a snap back situation. They found us easy peasy the next morning, but it was a cold, wet, night on rough seas, on a small LCAC raft. Tot. Ropes terrify me. I won't even trust them to tow a vehicle. There was a person at the beach who got impaled by a flying beach umbrella. Horrible situation. Her husband was right beside her and she died within seconds. Holy shit. After reading lots of these, this has to be the worst and not a death by misadventure. Alive one second, totally dead the next. Completely random, chance occurrence. A friend of a friend showed up at his girlfriend's apartment with a head wound. He didn't know how it happened. He also didn't know how he drove over there. She took him to the ER where he ended up passing away. He had his keys, wallet and phone on him. The only thing we could think of as he might have tripped, fell and hit his head in the wrong spot. It was probably muscle memory that got him there. How awful. Or adrenaline. There was a woman who got attacked by a bear on her isolated mountain ranch. After fighting off the bear, with the help of her dogs, she got in her car and drove several miles down precarious mountain roads to the nearest fire station with her face ripped clean off and, IIRC, one eyeball dangling out of its socket. She said she was almost totally blind and going into shock, but a combination of muscle memory and adrenaline somehow got her down the mountain safely. She did an AMA on Reddit once. Cool lady. She wrote a memoir, too. Edit to add. Her name was Elena Hansen. Here's a link to her AMA. Her Reddit account, she's still an active user. Hi, you, Elena Hansen, and her memoir. I read her memoir and I quite liked it. She's a funny woman who has lived a very interesting life, even aside from the bear attack. Elena here. Thanks very much for the kind words, eldest, me too, by the way. Coming up on 15 years after the incident, it's still one of the wackier misadventures of a life spent skirting the far reaches of the Laffer curve. If this comment section teaches us anything, it's to watch our six, kids, and always remember. Asterisk everybody gets it in the end. YMMV When I was a 13-year-old boy, I witnessed my grandfather die. He was less than 15 feet away from me when he was decapitated by shrapnel from a broken piece of heavy farm equipment. I'm 50 years old and still struggle with that moment in time. PTSD can be a real bitch. A friend slipped and fell in the tub. Cracked his head. His roommate found him a half hour later. Died on the way to the hospital. I knew this kid in HS who always ran from class to class pulling his roller backpack behind him. So it's no surprise when he visited the Grand Canyon with family that he wanted to run down a slope. Well, he got going too fast and couldn't stop himself. 
His entire family watched him run off the side of the Grand Canyon. Oof edit. Now that I think about it some of the people I went to high school with were wild. There was a serial killer who began stabbing homeless people in order to scare his dad into coming home and also a teacher who scissored another girl during lunchtime. Edit edit. The sex kind of scissoring teacher saw serial killer classmate. There's a book called Death in the Grand Canyon telling the stories of PPL who died there. It's 500 pages if that tells you something. My Sill's aunt died of hypothermia. She went for a walk out in the hills in the winter. She knew the trail very well but got disoriented by a light snowfall and got lost. She got cold and tired, laid down by a rock and died of hypothermia. She was 100 yards from her car. I was snowboarding in 1997 in Switzerland with a good friend. He was skiing. I had caught an edge and landed on the back of my head while also twisting my knee badly. I was being looked over by the mountain rescue and first aid. I told my friend he could keep skiing, I would head back to our villa. I ended up going to sleep at around 6 p.m. as I had a hot shower and some Tylenol 3s after dinner. I woke up to see my friend hadn't returned and thought it was odd but maybe he hooked up with a lady at some bar. Friend never came back from skiing. He was found deep in a crevasse the next afternoon and frozen to death. Swimming and one of my buddies was screwing with the great thing over a drain at the bottom. Got his foot stuck and couldn't extricate himself. His brother, cousin, and I nearly drowned trying to free him so we got to watch him die. Haven't thought about this one in a bit. My neighbor was cleaning his gutters and fell off his roof because he missed his footing when stepping fell right on his head. This was a few year back now but the family moved quickly after even though it had been their house for like 30 years. I can't say I blame them. A guy the first went to high school with was helping his family do some repairs to a silo on their family farm. A section of the silo's roofing gave way and in he went. Suffocated under thousands of pounds of grain. My uncle was mowing grass on an embankment next to a small body of water. The mower unexpectedly slipped down the embankment and overturned on top of him, pinning him under the water. He drowned in a few feet of water that he otherwise could have stood up in. Edit. Lots of folks asking where, when. Not recent. About 13 years ago in the American Southeast. Based on responses, though, maybe not as much a freak accident as I thought. Seems to happen a lot. When my mom was working in hospitals, they had a patient whose tractor rolled over him and he fell into a ditch with water. He was so lucky because he was on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere and when he rolled over, a car passed by. The woman driving rushed to his aid and held his head out of the water. This was before cell phones so she had to wait holding him until another car drove by and then rushed to the nearest house to use the phone. Guy made a full recovery thanks to that woman being there at the exact right time. A friend of mine was riding his four-wheeler out at an off-road park, he kicked up a tree branch that impaled him in the thigh, he bled to death before anyone even knew it happened. Someone I went to school with was killed when someone went over a bridge over the highway onto the car she was in. She was killed, it seems, on impact. As far as I'm aware, the person who jumped survived. I'm gonna add an edit here to say it was my understanding that the boy jumped. Initial reports said it was a suicide attempt but that isn't really able to be confirmed, as the person in question is still a minor. So I'm gonna change the wording. I didn't really anticipate this would get a lot of attention. I can't comment on his intentions. Also, the other person in the car did survive. The girl I went to school with was the only casualty in the incident. No charges or lawsuits happened after the fact. Just one of those things. Teacher in my school lost all three kids in a freak traffic accident on the highway. Their car lost a tire, which caused them to swerve into the gas tank of a semi-truck, which exploded, killing two of them instantly. The third kid managed to crawl out of the car while he was on fire, and died later in the hospital. The saddest part is that they were all on their way to visit their father in the hospital after his back surgery. A guy the first went to HS with got hit by a train. It wasn't suicide. It was before Uber and he had been at a party drinking. He did the responsible thing by taking the subway. When he heard the train coming he stood up to take a step forward, like everyone does, but was so drunk that he stumbled over his own feet and fell onto the track. 
Lovely girl I went to HS with got a scholarship to a prestigious university, being one of the very few students from my shitty school to make it to college or uni. Two weeks into term her roommate found her laying in her bed dead. The heating boiler was faulty and she died of carbon monoxide poisoning in her sleep. We'd even thrown a party for her to celebrate her achievement. This was in 1996 and I'm tearing up a bit thinking about this. Rip Sonia. My childhood friend, later, as an adult, fell to his death in Acadia National Park when he fell off a cliff attempting to get a nice picture. If you live in corn-heavy Midwest areas of America, you're probably familiar with detasseling. Detasseling is a job a lot of smaller towns will let kids do, I think from 13 up, with parental permission. It's very common where I'm from. Essentially, you just walk with a group of other people through cornfields pulling the tassel off the top to prevent them from germinating and seeding excessively. Anyway, like two years after I did it, there was an accident involving two high school freshmen stepping into a puddle that an electric irrigator was shorting into. One of them basically died immediately, the other en route. Rip Hannah and Jade had a classmate who was working outside. Got stung by a wasp and had an allergic reaction and died less than 24 hours later. He was married seven months they were working on starting a family. His wife had to make the final decision as he was completely brain dead. Guy was working on his car, the brake failed, and his head was crushed by the wheel, the tire was off at the time. The amount of people that don't use jacks in the right spot or when to put the car up on blocks when they do at home car repairs is too high. I am insanely paranoid of my car crushing me. Whenever I work under it I make sure I have two jack stands, the hydraulic jack and two tires under it. That's five layers and I'm still sacred. I have a few colleagues, just in the last eight months alone. One was killed when a drunk semi-truck driver drove through the gas pump he was fueling up at. Left five kids behind. Another was an accomplished and experienced athlete, killed when his snowmobile flipped on him. Left three kids. The third was practicing on a closed road, professional driver, closed course situation. The car left the road by a few feet and he was impaled on a fence post. It's been a shit year. Guy the first knew was driving a tractor trailer with a stack of pipe on the back. He swerved to avoid an accident after a car cut him off, went into the ditch, and was cut in half when the load was propelled forward by the inertia from the sudden stop. A guy the first knew was setting up a rope swing over a lake for his kids and their friends, which he had done many times before. He always would take a practice swing himself before he would let the kids go. His hand slipped off the rope and he fell before he was over the lake. He hit his head on a rock and died in front of the kids. Was putting up decorations in the barn, getting ready for a wedding. Apparently something up there was in the way and he decided it needed to be cut off so he took a chainsaw up the ladder to do it. Lost his balance and fell off the ladder while holding the chainsaw. No, spontaneous combustion. I don't know if it's a freak accident, or an expected one. A guy the first knew in HS was in the hatchback area of a small car, with four other guys who were in the seats. They had a crash with another car. Everyone in both cars was killed, and everyone in both cars was drunk. The guy the first no, in the hatchback, was cut in half. That's messed up. I think about the stupid stuff I did when I was a teenager and in my 20s and realize lucky to be here. The guy was really cool too. Name was Pugsy, and a great guy, everyone loved him, but also tough as nails. His little brother was shot in the eye with a BB gun and blinded. He went to the kid they were both like 15 at the time, to confront him, and the other kid pulls a knife. Pugsy says don't even think of sticking me, or I will stab you in the ass with that knife. The other kid lunged at him with the knife, and Pugsy, a man of his word, got the knife and stabbed the kid in the ass. Childhood friend of my drowned, his leg got trapped swimming in a relatively shallow river. He went down and just never came back up. It happened to one of the nicest people I ever knew and it makes me so mad that we lost touch before I found out what happened. Got a tongue piercing. That same night, took a sleeping pill to sleep. Choked on his tongue which was swollen from the piercing. Not much of an accident I suppose but my little brother suffered from type 1 diabetes. Gotta take insulin shots frequently every day. 
He'd had it for 15 years but still barely made an effort to handle it because he never got comfortable with having to stab himself daily. One evening he went to bed with a low blood sugar, something he'd admitted to doing many times before that we'd scold him for constantly and warned him would kill him, and just didn't wake up the next day. I saw him on the 5th, found out he was gone by the 8th. If it had been my mother, or father it would have made sense, but to lose my baby brother so suddenly just feels so wrong. Edit. Thank you all so much for your support it means a ton. Keep your loved ones close, and if they have medical conditions make sure that they have safety nets and contingencies in place too. All it takes is one night with low or even high blood sugar and it could be over. I regret opening this thread. Freak accidents are terrifying. Knew a guy who was in a car crash and saw his aunt almost beheaded. He was about 10, screwed up his mind. At about 20 he flipped his dirt bike with his girlfriend on the back and it cracked her head open. Was deep in the woods camping. She died. Couple years later he was stealing a motorcycle walking it across the street at night in the rain and got hit by a car. Lost a leg. Couple years after that he was angry at a music venue so he and a friend tried to build a bomb in a parking lot. It went off and they both were killed. Girl I grew up with was driving home in college and go into a horrible car accident that gave her brain damage and pretty much removed her jaw from her skull. Tons of surgery and three years later, she walked down the aisle at her wedding. She was in her yard a few months after her wedding and slipped, tripped, felt dizzy and fell, they aren't sure, and hit her head on pavement patio and her husband found her dead. 